So, um, my name's Mark Unwin. Um, who am I? Um, over the next 25 minutes, I'll give you a background of uh, a community project I started, um, software obviously, um, about 15 years ago now. Um, I'll tell you about some of my experiences running it, uh, good and bad. Um, some of the things I've tried to, to build that community up. Um, some have worked, some have not. Uh, one spectacularly not, but we'll get to that one in a little while. Um, and maybe you guys, if you're interested in building communities around your projects that you may or may not have, um, might be able to benefit from some of the mistakes I've made. Um, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I've worked in IT since I finished school. Uh, in 89, I got my first computer in about 83. Um, I've written code since I first got my first computer, but I wouldn't consider myself a programmer. Um, I've never been classically trained. Um, I didn't manage to finish that uni degree. Um, so I'm a glorified hacker as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I write stuff, I'm not ashamed of it, and it seems to work. Um, I'm currently working for Opmantec Software here on the Gold Coast. Um, I'm lucky enough that even though I live in Brisbane, I only have to go to the office one day a week, so I'm really spoiled. Um, and you can find me at the usual links if you want to if you want to ask me some questions. Um, I'm a more an open standards advocate, um, but I see free software as a way to uh, further that agenda uh, very much. Look, I love free software. Don't get me wrong. Um, hence, I spend a lot of time on it. Uh, too much, if you ask my wife. Um, but yeah, I, to me, uh, open data standards are something that's very, very important. So the uh, project that I have is called Open Audit. Um, some of you may have heard of it before. Uh, it's a package of software targeted at system administrators mainly. Um, it was originally written for me, by me, um, back in about 89, maybe 88, uh, 99, maybe 98, can't remember, it's too long ago. First released to SourceForge in 2004. Um, we're currently getting between five and 6,000 downloads a month. Uh, it's no longer on SourceForge. Um, we have a, what I would consider a small community. We've got about 1,800 forum members and there's been about 650 forum posts this year. Um, to which I've replied to every single thread. Um, so there's probably been 500 threads. Um, so it does take up a little bit of my time. Um, it's AGPL licensed. Um, and the company that I'm working for at Mantec, we try and commercialize it a bit by building stuff that sits on top of that um, to encourage people to, to get more value out of the software. Um, you can use the base package for free. It's AGPL licensed, it will do all the basic stuff that you need, that's the data collector, basically. Um, so we try and generate a bit of money by offering more value on top of that. Um, I was lucky enough that when I originally wrote it, I was working for a company, um, uh, for better or worse, that didn't like spending money on IT. Um, they asked me a simple question. They said, how many installs of Microsoft Office do we have on our 200 odd PCs? I couldn't tell them. Uh, we had no management software at all for the 200 PCs it spread across uh, 16 WAN sites. Um, I went and got a quote for, at the time, I think it was SMS server from Microsoft, uh, to which they laughed at it. They said, there's no way we're spending $20,000 to answer a question. I said, but it can do so much more. It, no. Um, so that was the genesis for me saying, well, how do they do it? There's got to be a way to find this information out. Um, and 15 years later, I'm still doing it. So what is a community? It's really up to you. Um, it depends what you want from it. Um, the, the standard definition, and I stole this from Wikipedia, is a community is a social unit of any size that shares common values. So I suppose I have a community around our software project, um, but that really isn't enough for me. Um, personally, 
I want more from my community than someone just downloading the software and going away. I want it, I'll get to what I want. Um, but importantly, that's what I want for my community. It might not be what you want for your community. So you need to ask yourself, what do I want? It's really up to you. And there's, okay. So can I get a show of hands from people who have written free software under any free software license? So can you keep your hand up if you posted your, if you have posted your code online anywhere that people can download? So most people, right? Can you keep your hand up if you actively tried to form a community of people downloading that code? So a few dropped. Can you keep your hand up if you if you think, in your opinion, you successfully managed to have a really vibrant community of people that are downloading that code? Yeah, it's hard. There's a few. It's good, no, I might talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a difficult thing to do. And it's difficult um, because we have humans. Um, it's, it's hard work, and it, I can't read what I wrote there. It's a pain in the backside. Um, you know, it would be nice if our users could just be normal and want what I want. The world would be a great place. Users don't want what I want. Um, they're not normal. They don't want what I want. And they have different agendas. Uh, and it, it would be nice if they wanted what I want. So we get all sorts of questions from all sorts of users. Um, do they really need that feature that they've just asked for? Really good example is earlier this week I had a user email us and say, why doesn't your software tell me the serial from my mouse? And I said, oh, I don't really know or care. I didn't say that, that's what I felt like saying. Um, of course the response was, um, Sure, if you want us to do that, we can help you out with that. We'll happily sell you some development hours to get the serial numbers off your mice. Don't really know why they would want that. Don't really care. Um, it's up to them. Users. So a lot of, a lot of community members um, actually won't be involved in your community at all. They'll simply, especially with free software, they'll simply download it, they'll use it or not, and you'll never hear anything from them again. Um, as you saw before, we get like five to six thousand downloads a month. That's not going to be five to six thousand new users every time, but it's going to be a, a lot. Um, and we've had like six hundred odd, six hundred fifty forum posts this year. Um, so either a lot of them are downloading it, it's not working it, and they're deleting it, or a lot of them are downloading it and just using it, and it is just working. I like to think it's the latter because if it was the former, I'd have a lot more forum posts saying this doesn't work. The forum works. <laughs> the forum works. The forum's not uh, perfect. Um, we've had to implement admin approved signups, otherwise, we have this many spammers sign up every single day. It doesn't seem to matter what you do. Um, so, all we ask is people to register and just forward that on to me, and I'll activate their account ASAP. Um, and we do get quite a few signups. Um, I probably get rough numbers, 10 a week, I suppose. Um, we don't get 10 posts a week from those people though. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of fingers crossed that they would be saying, hey, this isn't working if it wasn't working. Um, the flip side to that is you will get community members that will do everything you ask for and more. Um, we're fortunate enough that we have one or two of those at the moment. Um, those guys test the hell out of everything I give them. They'll provide bug fixes and code patches back. Um, they'll provide feature requests. I've had them code one or two features. Um, they've been really, really good. Um, unfortunately, you get smaller, ever decreasing orders of magnitude between users, community members, contributing community members, and then what I call valued community members, which is what those guys are. Um, so I call users is people that will download the software, go away, you'll probably never hear from them again. A community member has actually signed up to the forum, a contributing community member has posted to the forum, 
And a valued community member obviously responds to posts, gives me patches, all that sort of stuff. So out of the 1,800 forum members, we probably have two at the moment. So humans are a problem because they have Sorry. They have different levels of knowledge, they have differing ideals, they've got various motivations, and they'll all lead to disparate goals. And you can almost guarantee that they won't line up with yours. Um, I've been asked personally by everyone from um, high school kids to university graduates to CIOs and university professors, how do I do something with your stuff? And that's fine. They're, um, the old saying, there is no stupid questions, um, kind of. Um, you get questions on everything. Some guys are really good, will ask you a really technical question. Other guys will ask you a question and you just go, why haven't I thought of that? You know, some really out of the blue stuff and it's great. On the flip side, I've had guys with Windows domain admin credentials ask me how to install IIS. Um, I've had a guy seriously ask me, can I just rewrite the whole lot in ASP.NET because they don't do PHP? No. It's a short answer to that one. Um, uh, he seriously wanted me to rewrite it and not contribute anything and not pay and not do anything. Just rewrite it for me. It can't be that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can. Yep. Um, and I've been given just about everything. I've been given money, abuse, praise, criticism, assistance, opportunities, and heaps more. You know, if you can get it right and you can get your community members going and on your side, it's a, it's a really good thing. So that comes to what, what do you want your community to be? So do you even want a community? A lot of people might not have a reason for having a community. Um, basically, does it give your project something that your project needs? If, if a community is not going to give your project anything that it needs, I don't know if I'd bother. But that's your choice. So I'm assuming that because you came along to hear me talk about this stuff, you actually would like your community to be involved somehow, your project would see some benefit from a community, so we'll just assume that. Um, so the, the first step you should do would be to ask yourself, what do I want out of my community for my project? Sorry about that. What? Just, just, uh, just, uh, sorry. Oh, good. Just, just say no. Just say no. Yep. Totally oh, we're back. Cool. So do you want nothing out of your community? Do you want some code from your community? Do you want helpful answers to other community members' questions? What do you want from your community? Then you need to ask yourself, why do I actually want those things? Because it's easy to say, I want code patches. Um, it may be a little bit more difficult to say, hang on, why, why do I want code patches? Um, obviously, most people will say, yes, I want code patches to improve the code, right? You may not necessarily want code patches. One example might be you put some code up there, all you would like from your community is to say, thanks, that's great, and tweet or stick something somewhere online that you can reference that says, that bit of stuff was really useful. You could then put that on LinkedIn or a resume or something to say, yeah, I did this, all mine, it's great. So you, you may not actually want code patches. Most people do. So asking yourself why, it is important because it'll help you clarify your community goals. It will really narrow your scope. So on the other hand, you may be genuinely altruistic and you might want everything from your community. You might want code, documentation, helpful forum members, references all over the web, conferences. You might want everything. Obviously that will broaden the scope of what you're going to need to do to achieve that. 
but it's up to you. It's up to you to decide what you want from your community. Oh, and just for fun, all those questions and answers change over time. Uh, mine have, slightly. They're still largely the same. Um, I started from a purely altruistic point of view. I wrote some code. I thought it would be useful to others. Um, so I uploaded it to SourceForge. We started getting downloads. It was good. It was good. But all of, those, all of those questions and answers will affect your community in different ways depending on what you want, how you answer the questions, and how you go about implementing those answers to get uh, results. So on top of that, and depending on what your project is, it will attract a different audience, and that audience will respond in your community in different ways. Uh, if you have a PHP library uh, that you whack up on GitHub, you will likely attract code patches, because that's what it does, right? If you have uh, an application designed for writing technical documentation, you'll probably get one or two code patches. You'll more likely get a lot of feature requests from technical documentation experts saying, can you do it like this? So what your project is will largely determine the sort of interactions your community has because of that audience. So my project tends to attract, I'll call them reasonably intelligent people, um, who usually just need a little help along the way um, to get the information out that they've managed to get in. Um, the application basically goes out to the network, grabs everything it can find. It's all in the database. Now you've got to get that information out, not just data. You want information in a useful way to answer the questions you're trying to answer. So I'm, I'm reasonably lucky. Uh, we get bug reports pretty much all the time, um, occasional code fixes. As I said, we've got a couple of value community members who usually beat me to posts on the forums. Um, we're in Australia, the internet's worldwide. I'm usually asleep when most people post to the forums, unless they happen to be in Australia. Um, so I'd, I'd personally prefer, pre prefer more code contributions. Um, it is what it is. I've got, I've got to work on that some more. So what were my project goals? It was pretty simple. I wanted it to be the best free software, net, um, free software network discovery and inventory software you can download. That was it. Pretty easy. Not. Um, why? Because I was out, I well, still am altruistic. I enjoy other people using it. Um, I in, actually enjoy writing this particular piece of code. And to be honest, it helps me in my employment. It helped me from day one when I started writing it. It's helped me virtually every single job I've had after that. So they were my reasons when I initially started it. So my goals have changed slightly over time. I still want it to be the best free software inventory and discovery product. I now also want it to be the easiest to use. We're getting closer. Um, well, we're getting close to what I would call easy to use. Um, I think we're almost the easiest as it is. But I now also want the, the free software side to be able to support the commercial side. Um, we've got to eat. So I would love to be able to do this all day, every day, and give it away for free. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. The world doesn't work like that. Um, so yeah, my goals have changed slightly. So what did I do to achieve my goals? Initially, I stuck it up on SourceForge, and that was it. There it is. Where are my users? Where's my community? Um, we got downloads. There was people downloading it. It was working, but not very many. 
I might have got 10 a week. Um, so I, I sort of sat back and had a think about what are the other big projects out there and what do they do? How do they, how are they so successful? Um, and to me, the answer was they have a community. They have large communities, the Linux kernel, uh, PHP. These are big projects with a lot of people involved. Those people in, that are involved are all part of a community around that product. Um, so to me, a light bulb moment was I need a community. At the moment, it's just a web page that people can go and download from. So I moved it from SourceForge. I got a web host. We whacked up a, um, a web page that said, this is what it is, this is what it does. Um, we implemented some forums, excuse me, uh, so people could ask questions. And it was, it, that initially made a large difference. We went from 10 downloads a week to 100. It was pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. Still wasn't really that good. So I sat down and said, well, what do I want from my community? I came up with those couple of things. And my idea was that if I could get more users, I'd get more community. I'd get more eventually valued community members, which would give me code and features. And if I got more code and features, I would get more users and I'd have a bigger community and we'd rinse it and repeat it and we'd have everybody using it. Um, I still think that holds true to a certain extent. Um, I'm still trying to do that. The more users, the better. Um, and we're doing OK. Oh, I got out of order. I got mentioned in the SourceForge email letter as project of the month. I got mentioned on Slashdot in a relevant discussion. That was interesting. Um, largely uh, emerged out of that unscathed. Um, the, uh, the web stats on the shared host were interesting for that week. Um, but it, that worked. Uh, getting them, just getting the name out there worked a lot. So I also uh, started emailing users. Um, so let me put up what didn't work. Emails. Emails are a very uh, touchy subject, and especially 10 years ago, um, if someone had signed up to a forum and all of a sudden they got blasted with an email saying, look, new release, sh new shiny, even though we weren't trying to sell them something, a lot of people reacted very, very negatively to that at the time. I think that's changed somewhat nowadays. People kind of expect to be emailed. Um, but at the time, that was a big negative for me. Um, I did it two or three times. I got way more negative response than positive, so I, I sort of steered away from it from then on. Um, as I said, I, I don't think it's quite the case now. Um, but a good thing about email was if I emailed someone directly, one-to-one, -one, me to them, which obviously takes a lot more time, massively different response. Um, people were very receptive. People um, could ask me questions directly, that was all fine. I'd still encourage them to post those questions to the bulletin board where everybody else could see them and see my answer, um, but much more receptive. Unfortunately, that doesn't really scale, um, but we still, I still do it. Anybody can email me, my email address is on the, on the forums. Um, it's not hard to find. So something else I did that didn't work. Okay. Our lack of communication. At, deep down, I'm a geek. I don't like really, I won't say I don't like talking to people, but I'm probably more introverted than extroverted, uh, hence standing up here in front of everybody. Um, probably not the best communicator in the world, hence standing up here in front of everybody. 
Um, so in about 2006, the project was going quite well. We had six other developers. There was two guys from the US, a guy from Italy, uh, two guys from the UK, a guy from Germany and myself, so seven all up. Um, we had our own little private meeting room in the, in the forums. We used to talk reasonably well. Um, but I really fell down when I decided that people were asking us for stuff that we couldn't easily retrofit into the product as it was. Um, the background was, you know, it was written for me uh, in my little network and it had one user and that one user could see and do everything. All of a sudden people were saying, hang on, um, I want to give the guys from accounting, I want them to be able to see but not edit the details on these boxes. I was like, oh. To retrofit that was a nightmare. Um, on top of that, bearing, uh, bearing in mind the code started in 80, uh, 98 or 99, um, and I don't consider myself a programmer, the code was interesting. Um, lots of inline PHP and inline SQL and all sorts of wonderful stuff that you would get literally shot for nowadays. Um, so I decided, let's park version one there, let's get a blank sheet of paper, let's reuse everything that we can, but start with a blank sheet of paper and see what happens. I communicated that as best I could to the other developers. Um, I tried to keep them appraised of what I was doing. We now have one developer, me. Um, my failing wasn't so much that I didn't communicate. In that instance, my failing was that I didn't get them on board. Um, it was largely me sitting in my computer room uh, writing the code for V2 and those guys were mucking around still with V1. All well and good, but when I eventually said, right, here's V2, those guys all went, oh, really? I don't want to learn a whole new code base. This is only, it was only part-time gigs for them as well. Um, some of them had other gigs that they moved on to. Some of them just didn't want to bother, and some of them, two minutes, some of them just thought it was all too much. So hence we have one developer now and that's me. So I better rush through the rest of this. Um, so what else have we done? We've, we now have commercial add-ons. It's had no real impact, um, which has been a good thing, I think. We've had the occasional rant email. This is not free software. No, that bit's not. But everything else you're downloading is and you can use that as much as you like. Um, so in short, it's had no real impact. Um, in terms of the community, probably slightly positive if anything, um, so I don't really care. You know, we get the occasional rant emails like, yes, okay, I'll file that one. Um, so thoughts, the more community members you have, the better. The more community members you'll have, the more contributing, the more contributing, the more valued. Get as many users as you can and it will flow down and communicate with them. More than anything else, communicate with them. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do. As long as you get the, the word out there and people, you're in people's minds, um, especially if they email you or post in a forum, um, I make sure I do my damned best to reply as soon as possible to every single forum post and to every email that I get asking me for help. Um, that, that probably, that single action more than anything else has helped us get and retain users. Um, make it easy for people to contribute and to contact you. Again, forums and email, most people are used to those sort of things. Um, and be responsive. Um, so, some of that may have been of use to you, um, some maybe not, but go away. If you want a better community, go on away and ask yourself why. What, what do you want from your community and why do you want that? Asking those two questions, they'll guide you to what you need to actually do to achieve that. It'll be different for every project. Your community will be different depending on your project. Um, so go away, ask yourself those questions and say, I think these things will make the biggest difference to help me achieve those goals. Be prepared to be a cat herder. Um, that's kind of half the fun. 
can be half the frustration. Um, but the reason you're doing it is, if you're giving away your software, you obviously enjoy doing it. If you can enjoy your community as well, all the better. And I think that's it. Any questions? Just like my software, it just works. <laughs> um, in my project, I seem to end up spending all my time answering people's questions mm -hmm. rather than coding software. Mm -hmm. Does this happen to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, the trick is to, um, we, we've spent uh, a fair amount of time and resources trying to make it really simple to use. If it's really simple to use, it should just work anyway, but if it's really easy for people to use, hopefully you won't get as many of those questions. Um, a, lot of our, a lot of my responses are simply, click this, this, and this, and it will do what you've just asked me to do. That's great. I, you know, it's a shame they couldn't work that out, but if that's the length of my response, that's, I'm okay with that. That's okay. We seem to be getting less questions as time goes on. I'm going to take that as a good sign. <laughs> You said you left SourceForge, where did you go and why? Uh, just a web host. Um, SourceForge, the forums weren't really working for us back at the time. Um, and yeah, it, just, it was just a move. Um, it was easier just to get a domain name and a web page and just smash it up there. And it did seem to make a difference. Uh, we kept the code on SourceForge um, and referenced it a lot. We were using Subversion at the time. SourceForge had a Subversion host. Um, so that all seemed to work. The back end seemed to work okay. It's just the front end showing it to the users. It was nice just to have a shiny web page that looked okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.